kind of vintage do you sell so at I this sell movie posters and memorabilia uh, from 40s, 50s, 60s, a uh, little in the 70s. Um, Wilty posters, um, DVD, tape, uh, action, action figures, things like that. Right. How long have you been doing well, I've been this? For, oh, I'd say maybe about five years, five, six years. Oh, all right. So you really know your stuff. Like if I if I pull something out, you'd be able to tell me a lot about. Yeah, you, uh, yeah I should be able to tell you something about it. anything you'd like to know. Seven Boys and Sinbad, special effects by Ray Harry uh, That's Kerwin Matthews. He just passed away uh, maybe about a year or so ago. Uh, it's my favorite movie of all time. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's funny you took that one out. I remember the day I went to see that movie. I remember the seat that I sat in. I remember the, the, the fear that I saw it in. I begged my mother to take me to see this picture because it opened up at the Roxy. The Roxy is not there anymore. It's a, it was a beautiful theater and it opened at the Roxy. And I begged my mother for, for, for what seems like years because this, these pictures would be downtown for say like about a month and then they would come uptown to the local houses. And I begged my mother to take me to the Roxy the same and she says, no, I'm not taking you there, man. It'll be around the corner in a couple, couple minutes. I can send you to the movies for a dollar and a quarter. The Roxy, man, was two fifty a pop. Wow. Well, I'll never forget this picture. It's my favorite movie. Wow. Well, I'm glad I picked it out. I, it was funny you picked that one out. I, lo I lucked out. Uh huh. Well, thank you very much. So what are you selling today at the FM, at the uh, vintage mania? Mostly uh, pulp magazines, but I have some vintage digest, science fiction digest, and western paperbacks. These are first issues or reissues? Well, or? The, the pulp magazines, they were published between the late 1800s and the 1950s. Popular fiction magazines, they had all genres, western, science fiction, detective. And these books are actually reprints. Well, based on uh, the old superhero pulp. Right. And here, this is an original issue of The Shadow from 1933. And this is a reissue from Nostalgia Adventures. Oh, I see. Uh, they're edited uh, by Anthony Tolan, who actually knew the creator of The Shadow, Walter Gibson. And these are actually very recent. Most of these paperbacks are Western. Uh, these are the Science Fiction Digest. The Science Fiction Digest sort of came after the pulp magazines. The pulps were full-size publications. And then as we went into the 1940s, because of paper shortages in World War II, oh. and you know, because magazines wanted more space to display other products, a lot of the pulp magazines, like Astounding, became digest size. And this kept a lot of them going for several more years. And of course, a lot of them were gone by the 60s, although some new science fiction magazines with some new sensibilities appeared on the scene, and some of them, like fantasy and science fiction, has been published since the 1950s. Wow. And there's no going. Today, uh, the superheroes are really sought after by fans and collectors. Like Spider-Man and... Well, like The Shadow and Doc Savage. Oh, Doc Savage. Um, but then there were a lot of great detective authors in the pulps, although I've heard it said that the most popular pulps are actually the love pulps. Oh. The romance magazines. Uh, I hear their circulation was greater than a lot of these magazines. But they featured single stories, no continuing characters. Yeah, I remember the pulp exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. One of the most popular was Street and Smith's uh, Love Story magazine. And it's assumed that a lot of people bought them, read them once, and either traded them in or threw them out. So the supply of those doesn't seem to be as great as the superheroes, but the superheroes are the ones that are following these days. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You sell uh, comic books. Right. They're all vintage, huh? silver and golden age comics from 1940 to the 1960s. Wow. You know, uh, classic comics, mostly key comics, ones that you generally don't find, uh, you know, readily in the market. You know, I try to buy the ones in the pristine condition, the better condition. You know, real collectibles. You know, most people had these comics when they were a kid. And so 
still, I, I hear so much of people telling me that, wow, I used to have this book. People just want a little touch of the past, but they often buy my comics. Right, right. How, um, when did your interest in comics start? Uh, from your childhood? You, I've been uh, collecting comics since I was eight years old. Wow. Yeah. So this goes back a ways. Hey, I go back a, a long time. Oh. And as most people did, as a teenager, I got rid of them, I sold them. Oh. And so then, you were on Trepin your back then, too, selling your comics. Right. I sold them, and then I, I um, actually ran into a guy on the street selling the very same comics that I had as a kid. And I asked him, I said, how much are those books worth? And he told me. And then I went about repurchasing my collection. So wow. I bought them all over again. Wow, wow. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite yeah. comic? My favorites are the X-Men. I like the X-Men. And also, I think the favorite of most people of my era is Spider-Man. One of the old time favorites. I sell more of these than any other comic. Maybe that's why they remake the movie. That's why the movie is so popular. Yeah. For the baby boomers, guys in the 40s, and so forth. You know, this is a real memory for them. So, Spider Man is the most popular. Wow. Of general comic that I that I know of. And would you say it's the most valuable? Between Spider-Man and Superman, both are, are very high priced comics. Superman is also a very high comic. Uh, the most valuable in comics is Superman, and then you have Batman also. Which, you know, all of the classic comics they have movies for. Spider-Man, Batman, Superman. Wow. All of the big blockbuster movies of this, of this era. Yeah. The kids of this era love Spider-Man, Superman, and Batman. My kids love it. These comics like this are generally for a guy who has this collection and he's oh. missing an issue. Alrighty. Y you know, and so this is a p our particular taste, like an acquired taste, I would say. Yeah. It's not one of the uh, mainstream comics like Spider-Man, Batman, or Superman, you know. But it is valuable if you have the early edition. I just had a gentleman here telling me that he had number four. Oh. Yeah, of the early editions. It is valuable. So, if you're missing an issue, you know, you can find it here. Okay, great. <laughs> great. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. I am C.J. Henderson. So, you're the author of most of these books? Author or contributor. Wow. I may only have three stories and something, or one. Or I could have written the whole book. Depends on the book. Except, of course, for the Kolchak Papers. Oh. That's uh, by Jeff Rice. Those are the books that started the Kolchak series. Why is it on my table? Because I just wrote the first new Kolchak novel in 15 years. So this is freshly published? Or? Yes. Punisher, I've written Zorro, Mr. Moto, uh, The Domino Lady, uh, all sorts of classic characters as well. As a matter of fact, I just compiled a list the other day and there's something like about 40 characters uh, you know, on there that I've, people give me, like the Hardy Boys, H.P. Lovecraft, Inspector Legrasse, uh, Nancy Drew, uh, just acres of them. Out of all your characters, is there any one that you identify with most? That would be Jack Hagen. Uh, he is my hard-boiled private detective. He is my voice. Uh, he's New York City-based, uh, present day, and just the main thing with him is leave me alone. Uh, he, you know, he, I mean, he interacts socially, but when when there's trouble, he's always. You stay on that side of the line, I'll stay over here, and everyone will be happy. Everyone will be fine. You, just, you don't push this guy. You don't push him, everything's okay. Uh, he's, he's just generally my take no fill in the blank because this is for television uh, kind of guy. Uh, my first success, my uh, first published book, my first published stories were all him, and uh, he's still around today short stories, comic books, and novels. Uh, which book is that that has the character that you... Uh, what you pay for is the short story collection, and this is the graphic novel. That's all I have today. I'm just run out of the novels for the moment. The publisher hasn't gotten me any. You can 
only carry so much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, no, Evan. And uh, if anybody would like to read stories, they're always posted on my website. And all I ask is, if you read something, go over to contact us and tell me about it. Give me some for you if you don't like it. I'm all grown up. Look at the hair. You know, I can take it. I'd love to hear from you. Can you tell me about the ephemera you're selling today? Well, I'm selling all kinds of, uh, of memorabilia. Movie posters, lobby cards, sheet music, magazines, cigarette cards, you name it. Okay. And they're all things that have to do with the past. How far back do your uh, wares go? Uh, probably back to 1900 or so. So, Mr. Faulkner, can you tell me about uh, why you organized this event? Do you think it's a long time coming? Well, I organized it because there had been a drought of, of smaller vintage collectible shows in the Manhattan area because hotels generally were very expensive and unless you were running a big, big show, you couldn't afford the venue. I see. So, since I also am a dealer looking for outlets, this became something where I could do it at a reasonable price. You know? Yeah, I noticed the admission fee was very yes. reasonable. And that's so I want people to come in, you know, and uh, that's why we, we did this show and we hope to do more in the future. Yeah, well, I hope you do more in the future, too. And uh, you sell... I sell a little bit of everything. Yes. All, all stuff. Older movies, TV shows, pulp magazines, paperbacks, vintage comic books, vintage art cover books, magazines, you name it. If it's old, I like it. I have my own website, uh, and I have a special section on there for convention flyers. So whenever we have a show, you just click on a convention flyer, and it'll tell you when and where the show is. Okay, so we'll be able to find out about this vintage mania again yes, this year. Yes, you go to uh, comicbookconventions.com and scroll down it and see Vintage Mania in New York. It'll give you the next date that we're going to have it. It'll give you a spot to click on to. Alrighty. And it'll direct you to the poster or whatever we have on the website at the time. Okay, great. It'll give you all the details right there. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Faulkner. My pleasure. And I hope to return next year. Great. We'll be looking for you.